Little wins, right? Yeah. I did it, and there's Tom. Secret play. Welcome to Retired Time Productions. So welcome to the Retired Time Productions channel, and this is Dave. And today we're going to be doing a review of the Runcam Owl Camera. So this is basically what you get in the box. So you can see I didn't do a box opening. But let's just take a look at the box anyway. So here's the box. It says Runcam.com on the side. And on this label over here we have some good information. It's a half inch color to black and white uh, CCD camera and uh, if you got enough light it'll be in color if you are in low light it'll switch to black and white automatically and there's no menus that I can tell to adjust any of that it's uh, NTSC at least mine is I think there's a PAL version available as well it's a 700 TV line and here's the important part it's a .0001 Lux camera so it's supposed to be good for low light just how good I don't know but we're gonna find out and it's got a voltage range of 5 volts to 17 volts through a regulator and I'll show you that in a minute field of view is 150 degrees and it's an L-N it says down here so this is supposed to work in low light conditions it's not really a night vision camera but it works in low light conditions like under parking lot lights or or maybe if you got a full moon enough light for it to see and this is the basic wiring setup there's a little uh, voltage module right here so that you can use 5 to 17 volts input and this breaks it down to 3.3 volts right here and this over here is actually where the video comes out now let's look at the cable there's three wires going into the camera right there and the red one is where the 3.3 volts goes in from this little regulator here. And then on this cable here with the red and black wire, you can put up to 17 volts, they say. So I guess you could use a 2, 3, or 4 cell battery on that. And then this is the video cable with the uh, video line yellow and the black line is ground. So the first question I had with this camera was could I just take the wire off my PZ0420 board cam like this and then just go ahead and plug it into this camera right here. Let's see. Get the pins right here. Okay. But if I could jam it in there that wouldn't be good because this supplies like 12 volts on the red wire and that would burn this camera out. Even though this camera actually says on the back 5 to 17 volts right here, it actually can handle 5 to 17 volts. It can only handle 3.3 volts and you need the provided regulator that comes with it to operate the camera. So don't just plug it on the end of your wire from your ordinary board cameras because you'll burn it up. So the next thing was I wanted to hook it straight to my OSD. Now my PZ0420 right there has a configuration like this with three wires with black, red, and yellow. Yellow being for the video and the other ground and voltage. But the OWL comes with two separate harnesses here. So what I decided to do is move this red wire, take it out of this plug, and move it into this one so that I could just plug it onto my OSD. And I can do that by using just a pin and prying it out. So I'm just going to take a pin right here and lift up that tab and then pull the red wire out. Then I can just take the red wire and place it into this plug. Like so. And now I've got a standard configuration that will just plug right onto my OSD, which provides 12 volts on the red wire. Well, in case you're wondering, it does come with a lens cap right here. And how much does it weigh? Let's see here. I can get it on there. So I get 12.6 grams. 12.6 grams. 
Now the size of the camera is 19 millimeters by 19 millimeters by 25 millimeters. 19 by 19 by 25 out to the end of the lens. Now for us American guys we might want to go for three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch roughly and then out to the end of the lens oh maybe seven eight something like that out to the end of the lens now it also comes with this little video cable or adapter that you could plug on to your video line right here and go to an RCA plug to your monitor if you have a monitor so that would just plug right in there just like that I want to test the latency on these two cameras. They're both CCD cameras. This is the Runcam OWL camera here and this is the Security Camera 2000 board camera which is the PZ0420, your regular board camera. So we're just going to test the latency on those and maybe a couple other cameras. So here's my basic latency testing method using an oscilloscope and what I have is I have the scope triggered to the AC line over here, so I've got a, the probe, the scope probe is hooked to the AC line over here, and then I have 10 milliseconds per division set right here, and this knob is all the way to the right in the calibrate mode for 10 milliseconds a division. So that means that each one of these squares across the screen is 10 milliseconds. And then what I've done is I've I put the camera, which at this point is a PZ0420 board camera, I put that camera right here looking at the oscilloscope screen and then display the camera's image on the monitor here and then look at the difference for the lag time or, or the latency. Okay, here we are but with uh, 10 milliseconds per division looking at the PZ0420 camera. So that's 10 milliseconds for each of the 10 divisions on the screen. Look at the green arrows on the scope and in the monitor and you can see the head of the trace is about 2.4 grid spaces behind on the monitor. So that's times 10 milliseconds per division equals 24 milliseconds. Now this is the run cam owl at 10 milliseconds per division. You can see by looking at the two green arrows that we have about 1.7 grid spaces. 10 milliseconds per division is 17 milliseconds. Now here's the run cam owl at 5 milliseconds per division. And if you look at the arrows you'll see there's about 3.4. And again if by multiplying we get 17 milliseconds so it's confirmed. So this is the Mobius camera and it has quite a bit of delay so I had to change the time division on the scope to be 20 milliseconds per division on the screen so that's 20 milliseconds for each of the 10 divisions so at 20 milliseconds per division the Mobius uh, yields about 6.4 grid squares between the scope and the monitor and multiplying that gives us 128 milliseconds so here's the results. The OWL is the fastest at 17 milliseconds. PZ0420 is close at 24 and the Mobius is the worst at 128 milliseconds delay. So since I've reconfigured the wire to have all three wires on one plug, I can just plug it onto my minimum OSD right here. Now keep in mind this other wire here is not going to be used, but this black wire is the same ground that's on this one, so I don't need both. I've got a ground, that's all I need. So now I can just plug this right onto the minimum OSD right there. Just, we don't need this anymore. So there it is, Owl camera is ready to go. Here's a comparison of the PZ0420 to the Owl camera in different lighting conditions. So we're at uh, sunset, well not quite at sunset, the sun is starting to set behind the hill and you can see that the PZ0420 is kind of uh, washed out compared to the OWL but still certainly usable. Now the OWL doesn't have any adjustments that you can go in the menu and adjust anything, there's no menu, but uh, you can adjust the 0420 so perhaps 
it could be adjusted a little better, but I think I've got the PZ about right. So here's sunset, and you can see the L camera really picks up more details in the shadows when the sun is behind the hill. Now I'm aiming different directions so you can get different lighting conditions. You can definitely see the PZ works perfectly well, but the owl just looks a little sharper. There's also a difference in the field of view. You can see that with the owl cameras actually wider than the 0420. Of course, that can be changed. You can change the lenses on them. Okay, here's it dark. And you can definitely see the owl has more details in the distance. You can see the grass in the distance with the uh, owl camera right here. But with the PZ0420, you really can't see anything off in the distance. See how you can see the well head there? And now you can't. The white pipe that's in the middle. You can see it with the L camera, but not with the PZ. Now this is looking back at the porch. And some lights in the distance from the neighbor's house. You can definitely see a little more detail with the L. Now this is with three LEDs on the front of the quad. The quadcopter has three three watt LEDs, so that's only like nine watts. But you can see the owl can see further. For example, look here, you can see off in the distance better with the owl camera. And then I'm going to tilt the quad up here in a minute, and you can see how the lights shine out. And the, see the owl, you can see way off in the distance out on the golf course. You can't with the PZ. The PZ just looks dark out there. So that's the end of my review. If you have any questions, just leave them under the video. And uh, thanks for watching. I hope this helps. Uh, maybe we'll have some more information on the owl later.